Uh, for our family and friends, uh, hello again. Just want to let you know that we are safe and enjoying our journey. Uh, this is another video on Darwin, um, and I think it's appropriate that I talk about evolution and flora and fauna. Uh, we went to the Darwin Museum and I uh, saw this time chart of evolution. And this is one of the things which really annoys me. It's displayed as though it is a fact. And many people think evolution is a fact, but it clearly is not. It is a theory. It starts off with really good science when it observes the current changes, but then it moves into assumption and belief when it says every day in the past we have had the same rate of change. But this cannot be tested by observational science. We have not as yet found the ability to go back in time to observe and test the rate of change of any day in the past. If we could, I would love to hover in the sky and observe the massive changes in the year we had a worldwide flood which changed things dramatically in a very short space in time. Many years ago, around 1989, I was out running early one morning when I suddenly put my hands in the air and said, I didn't come from a monkey. God, please help me to be righteous. I believe God created me just as Genesis 1.1 says. Uh, this is Darwin Botanical Gardens, where we had a lovely time catching up with our friend Ian. Uh, I really love the flora and fauna up here in the Northern Territory. Flora is the flowers in an area and fauna is the wild animals in an area. Uh, this is the beautiful Kapok flower. What are you saying that is? The yellow flower? K-pop. 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 But I don't think it, well it looks the same flower, it must be a, a different variety. I, I didn't realise how delicate these were. Yeah, yeah, oh, if you look at them carefully, yeah, yeah it's amazing. And you see the, the big massive flowers, yeah. I've got a picture with it up close which does sort of show, but they're darker when you've, yeah. the, this is beginning to they're die so, off. They're so the delicate. Mm. Mm. When you see them coming along the road, you know, you just see colour. Yes, yeah. But, you know, I'm just looking at that. So this is a, another day out with Ian in the Territory Wildlife Park, about half an hour outside the city of Darwin. Another wonderful day with our friend Ian. And for here, we've got some underground natural uh, springs the forest and flowing into the Bering Springs uh, Nature Reserve next door. Okay, big habitat here. A lot of our river system up here in the top end. I assume quite a fair few of you are local. Quite a fair few of you may be travelling through as well. So I'll go over and introduce our river for those of you who don't fish in them every week. <laughs> Alrighty. So, question number one for you guys. If I log in a river up here in the Northern Territory or anywhere across the northern half of Australia, would I be up to my knees? No. Why not? Crocs. I'd be pretty silly to be standing up to my knees and I definitely wouldn't be doing it for long. Can anyone see a crocodile at the moment? No. Yeah. Swim close enough, they rush out and basically open their mouth as quickly as they possibly can. He's about to do it now. There we go, like that. By opening their mouth really quickly, it's like putting a bucket underwater really quickly. All of that water gushing straight into it and it creates a vacuum. So, wrapped. So, here's Geraldine now. So generally in the wild, if they're to be trapped, it's inside a predator's mouth. So a shark or a crocodile may come up behind them and bite them. They can't get, any, get out of the way and so their next instinct is to sting something. Most of the time when humans are stung by rays, it's by little marine rays. Little so I'm going to do some 
light over your heads and I want you all to be as quiet as you can because I want you to appreciate just how silent these birds fly. It's a clever little design that they have but silent flight allows them to sneak up on their prey without giving it a second's notice. So let's be nice and quiet. Just a little short one there, but you would have appreciated not any. The other thing I think that's really noticeable, yes, she's got lovely white plumage, but uh, have a look at the facial disc on the head of this bird. That facial disc is like, it sort of acts a bit like a satellite dish, and it's collecting sound for a barn owl and directing it into the ears. Left ear sits higher than the right ear. So she's able to triangulate sound perfectly. Now, if she's out and about and she's trying to find a mouse in the grass, she might employ hovering to try and pinpoint exactly where that bird or that little Our beautiful Brahmini kite has joined us and he's found out in our lovely wetlands. Now, he likes to hunt over the water. If he can, he'll try to grab any little fish that might be up near the surface. He, um, doesn't have any feathers on his lower legs, so have a look at that next time. There's a whole array of food available for her. Now, when she comes down, you'll notice she'll throw her legs forward and throw her tail down to act like a bit of a thread. That's a dress. Wow, dead. Like a big jungle jet She's also got a yellow eye. Anyone shout out and tell me. What a yellow eye tells you about the black neck stork, yes. Uh -huh. no. Massively strong uh, wings, he's just sailing around the back there, and very big, long, strong legs. But you'll see them a little later. He's scaring the red winged parrots, so they're having a bit of a flap and a bit of a. <laughs> the red wings in it. They're feeding in all the seeds above the trees. And when he flies over it, it makes him a little alarmed. So what he's doing now is he's doing a little patrol of his environment. And he's checking out that there's no whistling kites or black kites around. Because then species will try and take his fish from him. Now when I get him lined up, I'm going to throw this fish right in the centre of the pond. And he's going to go in and do a bit of a dive. Ready? There we go. Nice one. <laughs> oh, that was good. So he's got his fish. More spice. <laughs> <laughs>
bring a snake in. If I'm still not sure, then I'll go and get a, a reptile ID book and look at what's in the area that it could possibly be. And every now and then, in really exceptional circumstances, you might be lucky enough to find a new species. That doesn't happen very often, but just a few years ago, there was a central western Titan family out in the sort of Docker, region, Docker, Docker River region of... Um, yeah, I put it outside. <laughs> yeah, so Slady Grace, they're actually not a python, but they're oh. not, a, not on a lappet either. So they're non venomous, they're a, a colluder. Our journey down the Stuart Highway is next. So we'll see you next time and tell you about that.